Hi, Doreen. Hi, Hank. Um, I listen to you just about every day. Thank you. And um, I just wanted to ask a, a, a question, but lay down a foundation first for my question, and I'll ask it at the end. Um, we know that Jesus is Christ, uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the Father is the Father of lights, with whom is no very remorse and shadow of turning. And Jesus said, heaven and earth would pass away, but his words would never pass away. And Jesus said to his own disciples in Matthew 24, verse 20, about the coming destruction of Jerusalem, which was to be 40 years after he died. And he said to his own disciples, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And in Isaiah 66, verse 23, when Jesus comes back, he said, it shall come to pass. Doreen, is there a question in all of this? And from one Sabbath to another. Doreen, is there a question in all of this? And worship before me, says the Lord. Doreen, 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 you're preaching. Is there a question here? Well, I I said the question. I'm putting down a foundation for the question at the end. So what is what is the foundation for the question in in, in short? That's what What, I was. What are you asking about the Sabbath? And and then I'm going to ask you the question at the end. Yes, but what you're doing is you're preaching and you're communicating a particular. Jesus. What you're doing is you're. I I was laying down a foundation for about the question. Right. So is your question? Uh, have anything to do with whether or not Christians must worship on oh, Sunday no. rather than the Sabbath day? Oh, it's it's about um, also. Um, could you could you just listen to me and then you'll you'll understand what I'm saying? Well, just ask the question. Yeah. What what is your question? Yeah, I, I think you you're, you're you're probably wise enough to be able to formulate your question in a sentence. Yeah, well, if Jesus said all these things and his word never passed away, um, and today, like, I looked in the concordance and I saw that... Okay, so I get the question, Doreen, but, but, but here's the point in answer to your question. If you insist on being slavishly bound to Old Testament laws, then you want to be forewarned that failing to keep the letter of the law is hazardous to your health, because according to Mosaic law, Anyone who does any work on the Sabbath has to be put to death. But the Apostle Paul explained that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. And if you understand the grand meta narrative of Scripture, what you immediately understand is that there are types and shadows in the Old Testament that are fulfilled in the New. And the quintessential point of understanding uh, for the New Testament church was that in Christ we have our Sabbath rest, that Christ fulfills all the types and shadows that come before. And therefore, going back to types and shadows, when the ultimate sacrificial lamb has come, is sheer apostasy. We ought not to be involved in that. It is it is tantamount to trampling upon the sacred blood of Jesus Christ. So as long as you recognize that the greatest snare is a failure to recognize that Jesus Christ fulfilled, fulfilled. He didn't abolish, he fulfilled. As long as you understand that, then worship on Saturday if you like. But Unfortunately, too many people, and I know the progression of what you're doing. I've had this done by uh, so many Seventh-day Adventists over such a long period of time. It's first preach the sermon uh, as opposed to really want an answer to your question, and that is why I didn't permit you to do that. Uh, I typically would allow someone to ask a question or even to contextualize the question, but that's not what you were doing. Uh, you have a predilection in a particular direction, and it's a very dangerous one. And it's not one that I want to lend a pulpit to. And therefore, I hope that you will think about this uh, clearly and biblically. Scripture provides us with the reasons behind the symbol of the Sabbath. 
I remember in Genesis, the Sabbath was a celebration of God's completed work in creation. After the Exodus, it was expanded to a celebration of God's deliverance from oppression in Egypt. And as a result of Christ's resurrection, the Sabbath emphasis shifted to a celebration of the rest that we have through Christ, who delivers us from sin and the grave. And again, as I just said, for the emerging Christian church, the most dangerous snare was a failure to recognize that Jesus was the substance that fulfilled the symbol of the Sabbath. Now, it is a highly dangerous thing in the 21st century to set yourself up as an authority against the whole weight of church history. If you look at the weight of church history, you find that Christians worshiped on the first day of the week in honor of the resurrection, again, the resurrection through which we have our Sabbath rest. 